In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the snake logic puzzle. <clears throat> so here we have an example of a snake puzzle in an 8x8 grid. First off, I'm just going to cover the rules, which are very simple. What you need to do is to draw a line between the two endpoints of the snake. And when you draw the line, it is not allowed to touch itself at any point, even diagonally. So, for example, if I did this and then came back down, that would break the rule because the snake is touching itself there. Similarly, if I did something like this, again I'm breaking the rule because the snake is touching itself diagonally at that point. Now, the only other element to the rules is that these numbers <coughs> down for each row and each column signify how many snake segments belong to that row or column. And obviously you use this information so that you can logically try and solve the puzzle. Okay, let's go ahead and try and solve this puzzle. A good place to always start is at the edges. <clears throat> and here we have a situation where if we look at the last column, it contains seven segments. So seven out of the eight cells is going to be a snake. So what are the possibilities? Well, it could be like that. That's seven segments. Or it could be like that. It's also seven. But if we look a bit more closely, we see that this column here requires five segments. And because we can't put a segment in any of these, there is no way on either of these two options we can satisfy this number five rule. So we know that this one is incorrect. So the only two possibilities left is a situation like this, where we have a three and a four like that, or we have four and three like that. But we don't know which one of those two is correct at this point. What we do know though, if you look, is that those three cells and those three cells must always be a snake. So we can fill that in, add in. Of course it turns that way. All right, now, if we look at the top row, it contains four segments. So that must be one. And we can't go down and have only one snake segment at an edge at any point because that wouldn't follow the rules. So we know that the fourth one must be there. And the snake will then come down like that. So this means we know that none of those cells contain a snake. And these little dots just signify that those cells do not contain a snake. All right. So now let's look a bit further. This column over here contains a 1, which means it's only allowed one segment, and we already have it. So we know that none of those can be a snake. So we've got an idea now the snake comes this way somewhere and then it goes this way out, like that. All right, now let's look at this end over here. To join the end, it could either come up like this, but if it came up like this, it means that those two cells can't be a snake, which means we can't satisfy the seven here. Similarly, same argument there. Those two couldn't be a snake, therefore we can't get seven segments. And the same argument there. None of those could be a snake, so we can't get the seven. So we know that that must be a snake. And clearly, the snake can't come down here to complete, because then we'd never satisfy these three columns. We'd never be able to fill them up, because it's snake could be complete. So that means that 
the snake goes that way, and that's four, and that. So those are the seven on this column here. So of course, the snake goes that way, and of course, the snake goes this way. Now, if we look at the last row, we see if there's six segments. We have one, two, three, four, five. That's the sixth one. So we know, of course, that can't be a snake. And if we look at the second last row, that's four, one, two, three. So that must be the fourth, which means we must move up this way. And we can't go this way because three, we can't have only one on its own. So that's got to be the fourth one. And we've got to move back this way. We can't go there because we're going to touch diagonally. So we need to go up. And that means that these four are now satisfied for this column. And so we can join that up. Okay, so we're making good progress. The only thing we need to sort out now is this situation over here. All right. If we look at this row here, it contains six segments. We have one, two, three, four, five. So that has to be there, which means the way the snake goes is like that. So there we have it. <coughs> We've solved our first snake. Solving them is a little bit different from some other logic puzzles like Sudoku, which are more linear, where you try and solve one cell at a time. Here you need to often look at a much bigger picture. And of course there are also different snake puzzles and different grid sizes. And some puzzles even don't give you all the number of segments in each row and column, which obviously makes it a lot more difficult. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that.